Hey, Paul. Hey. How are you? Let me just actually see if... Can you guys hear Paul? Is he quiet? He sounds quiet to me. Say something, Paul. Uh, oh, am I? Shouldn't be. Hello? Hey, man. Hey. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I wasn't sure if I, there would be a next time, but there is a next time. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I mean, a lot of people don't know if there's going to be a next time. We actually don't know. I don't know if there's going to be a next time. No. I, I kind of got the sense you don't know who's coming on until like an hour before. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how it works. <laughs> yeah. And there was there was right. some talk about whether I should prepare for this. <clears throat> and I concluded, I, after thinking about it, I thought that preparing for it is probably a bad idea. Right. Um, how have I you been know. doing? Uh, you know, things are mostly the same. Um, yeah, I can imagine. I mean, <laughs> oh, this is what you, that's what you expected, huh? Well, I mean, because like, you know, so I, I, you know, I think the irony here is we were talking about you, um, you know, starting to date again or interacting with other people and things like that. Um, yeah. And so I was just kind of thinking about, you know, irrespective of whether you were transformed and had become a new person, it's like basically impossible for you to have a girlfriend today, not because you haven't been transformed, but because of the coronavirus and probably everything is like, uh, I know you're in the UK well. and things have been pretty active there, but um I don't think that that's really been the main reason I haven't got a girlfriend, if I'm <laughs> perfectly honest. Yeah. It might certainly slow things down, maybe, but I don't think I was on that like fast track anyway. Good. I don't think you were either. I think it's an unreasonable expectation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about, tell me about last time we talked. Like, what, what, how was that for you? Uh... So I, I did I did reflecting right so good you know it, it, it's definitely it, there's definitely advantages to the fact that it's recorded because obviously you can watch it as, as much as you want I don't I don't think I did that more than like once maybe twice probably once and then like with bits of clips thrown in there but um, one thing that occurred to me is that I was a bad patient last time why uh, so so let me explain this a little bit so I obviously coming on a second time my anxiety about it is not anywhere near as bad as it was the first time. The last time I had a double anxiety, I had the anxiety about coming on and publicly exposing my foibles and potentially saying something. I, I guess I still have that to a, a, a lesser degree because I mean, I could say something and I might forever regret, who knows, <laughs> hopefully not. Um, so, so that to a lesser degree. And then the thing that I still have this time as well is like the anxiety of getting the most out of our t limited time together. because. The first time I came on, I, I didn't know there'd be a second time. And this is the second time I'm coming on. I don't know that there's going to be a third time. So it, there's a huge anxiety about like wanting to make the most of every moment, right? Because you don't know how many of these moments you're going to get. And it feels like very precious time. And that was part of what fucked me up so much last time. Because, and, and someone in Twitch chat actually said it. Someone, someone was really switched on. He said, this didn't go the way this guy, that, that guy expected it to at all. And he's absolutely right. So uh, part of that anxiety manifests itself in me having like a bunch of conversations with you before I ever met you, um, which is I incredibly counterproductive, but it's sort of just a product of the anxiety. Like I can't, I can't stop it. It just happens. Sure. Um, so in, what I'm trying to say is in my effort to try and keep things on track, I actually ended up doing the opposite because I didn't know what the right track even looked like. You did, but I didn't. And I was trying to keep us on track and in so doing was fucking it all up. So I just hope that this time I can be a better like patient. What makes you think I have any idea what track we're supposed to go on? Yeah, well, if you don't, then we're both lost. You know, like uh, if you, yeah, if, if, if you no, know, but if your claim is that you can fix me, then where where, where, where have was, I claimed was, that? Well, was it fix? Uh, I guess it was just to help me. I guess it wasn't to fix necessarily, but then then but. It, Either way, let's say your claim is that you can help me. I would think that you would, would then have My, my claim isn't idea. even that I, I can help you. Uh, was it not? I thought nope. it was. I thought we were clear my my claim that. was that, that I, I think I can help you. Okay. My claim is also that I'm going to try to help you. But there's a big difference between I think I can do something, I can do something, and I'm going to try to do something, and I can do something. Oh, right. I guess the devil's in the details then. No, it's, it's, it, I mean, that's not the devil. That's the essence of it, right? 
So yeah. like there's a big difference between having an expectation of what I'm capable of and trying. Like there's a big difference between trying and having an expectation. Uh, all right. So so just so that I'm clear. <laughs> I think you did fine last time for what, the, what it's worth. Uh, well, divided opinion on that one, I guess. But um, in any case, I'm still going to try to do better this time by not trying to like oversteer things. Okay. I mean, you expressed frustration in, in being in a loop last time or something. Sure. So, Is it yeah, okay for me to be frustrated? <laughs> God, with a philosophical question. It's not a philosophical question. <laughs> I'm not asking if frustration... Intuitively, intuit intuitively, you imagine that frustration is a negative thing. And exactly. You want the That's yeah, why I'm asking, because I don't want to just start with our intuitive conclusions. I want us to understand whether we want to accept what our intuition tells us. Beautifully put, I would, Paul. I would like us to have a wonderful time together without the frustration. <laughs> okay. That's not what I'm looking for here. Okay. So I don't think that I'm, I do this to have a wonderful time. If I wanted to have a wonderful time, I'd make myself a cup of tea and I'd play Jedi Knight <laughs> or Jedi Fallen Order. That's what I do when I want to have a wonderful time. Or I'd take a bath with some eucalyptus and something else epsom salts that i i purchased at the grocery store today and i would just chill uh so you have let, wonderful times figured out yeah absolutely <laughs> um and so let's just think a little bit is it okay for me to get frustrated in a conversation with you uh, since you're asking me i guess it is but I, you know the average person doesn't doesn't even ask that I, I i just assume that if they're frustrated and i tend to be and i imagine i'm probably right most of the time that, that if someone is frustrated while talking to me, I've done a bad job of conversing with that person. Or at least, you know, especially if I didn't diffuse it or especially if I continue to exacerbate it. I, I don't know. I, 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 I envy the conversations you have with like some of the other guests that have been on where you tell them how much you enjoy the conversation. And I, I didn't get that from you. All I got from you was that you were frustrated with me at one point. And that feels bad. That feels like I didn't do as well as they did <laughs> or something. Okay, I don't okay know. good. So let's, let's, <laughs> let's understand this, okay? So, man, I wish I had another screen so I could ask Twitch chat some questions, right? So Twitch chat, you guys see what we're running across, right? This is Paul. Same Paul we met last week, right? So Paul is self-judgmental. Paul compares himself to others. So, like, let's just pay attention to that, okay? Let's also talk a little bit about frustration because I think, actually, this is, this is fantastic, man. So I think that... Um, Paul, it is part of what I think is holding you back is your desire to create and control the responses of people around you. Okay. Right. So you looked at our last, and by the way, I loved our conversation last time. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think our conversation last time, was I frustrated for chunks of it? Absolutely. But let's just, we're going to talk a little bit about what it means to be frustrated and, and why I think that that's perfectly acceptable. And in fact, and we're going to talk, so let me just make a note about that, okay? We're going to talk about frustration. Mm. But I just want to point out to you that I think that you said that you've had a thousand conversations in your head with me before, so that gets me yeah, curious. Was... <laughs> <laughs> so, don't don't so, ask about that. So, Paul, what were, in those conversations, what were we wearing? <laughs> <laughs> were we were we in your living room or i mean where, where did you have these conversations the locality the locality is sort of i don't it's nebulous i don't exactly recall I don't know if that's i'm just important. i'm just trolling you man I'm, uh, yeah, I'm um, aware. so but I, I think so we should talk about frustration but I, I just want to point out to you that already as you enter this conversation you have this idea that you want me to react a certain way and you're looking for a certain response no, no, no. I, no, I wouldn't ever go that far. Okay. I, I guess I just had some presuppositions about the kinds of things we would talk about or need to talk about in order to figure out how to... I, I, I guess I'm going to say fix me again. I like that term. Sure. You, okay. But, so but, what do we need to I, talk about to fix you? probably wrong. Time? I don't know. But you said you had some presuppositions. Oh, well, yeah, but I, yeah, I'd actually, so actually that was quite a, 
if we, if we don't have to talk about that sort of thing, I'd rather not, because some of those things are quite actually quite difficult to talk about. So it, it seemed like we didn't really need to. Last time was actually quite light, despite the fact that I ended up doing a Joker impression towards the end of it. Um, the, the majority of the, the discussion was quite light and easy. Yeah, so what makes... Okay, so now I'm a little bit... Well, you... Can I just think for a second? Yeah, of course. Now you have me curious about the things that are difficult to talk about. Oh, and, well, maybe I should and, never have mentioned that. And, and I'm also wondering a little, I mean, so, so th th this is the, so when, <clears throat> let me just figure out how to say this and make sense. So frustration and difficulty is part of the process of growth. And I think one of the biggest problem that, problems that people fall into is that they try to avoid those things, right? So like generally speaking, human beings try to avoid negative emotions, but it's my hypothesis and sincere belief that like negative emotions are a part of life and also a part of the process of like growth and being like a normal human being. So just because you were frustrating to me the last time we talked doesn't mean that I wasn't happy with the conversation. Like I get frustrated with my kids all the time. It doesn't mean that I don't love them and that I don't interact with them and that I don't value our time together. I actually yeah. don't wish for a frustration free life with them as bizarre as that sounds. Cause it's something strange. Like, like with my kids, I find that the more frustrated I get with them, the more I love them after they fall asleep. It's kind of a weird sensation, but I think that there's like, you know, there's, there's light and there's darkness and there's like, you know, there are two sides of a coin and it's completely fine. I mean, the people who I know who live lives that are relatively pain free are not the happiest people I know. All right. So I think it's perfectly fine for me to get frustrated. I think the question is, did we accomplish what we set out to do? And if frustration is part of the price we pay, so be it. Okay, well, yeah, so I mean, we got the... I, mean, I actually, I don't know if you can see this, but I I put the pearl on my wall. Can you see that? <laughs> what does it say? Oh, let me go and get it. <laughs> the pearl. <laughs> What's, which pearl? So, so did we, did we set out? Did we accomplish what we set out to do? Well, I got I got the the pearl to put on my wall, right? Hmm. You, can you read that now? Yeah, I have a very uh, protective hopelessness. Absolutely, there it is. There it is. So we, we got that out of it. Yeah. Right. And then there was also the, you know, the catharsis or whatever at the end, which I still don't understand what what that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and me both. Um, so I guess where we left where we left it is. You told me to notice it, and awareness precedes control. So, you know, I'm I'm sort of trying to keep in mind that that I have this protective hopelessness, as you call it, and I should try to notice it. So that I mean, so I went to the speed dating the the following week, and I well even before that, even so even the day after, which is when I went to the market to get some bread, like some girl is serving me, and I'm not trying to date her or anything. I'm not trying anything at all, but. Ordinarily, I would tend to approach her with a sort of very sort of glum look. But actually, I, I, for some reason, I just thought of something before I even opened my mouth. And I, I smiled at her instead. And I don't know, I just feel like, I mean, she told me, so this is kind of stupid, but I just feel like maybe that made the interaction a little better. Certainly then, obviously, I mean, she, she, you know, she gave me the option to have like a half bread instead of bang, buying the whole one. If I just... Which was actually, I took her up on that offer because actually I, I'm a bachelor. I don't need a whole, I can't get through the whole damn thing. So I save a bit of money. But I feel like she might not have even given me the, that option if she thought she was dealing with someone like, you know, who was withdrawn and didn't really want to have a conversation about anything. Yeah. So who knows, you know, you can't re rewind time and try it again. But I just feel like in general, and, and but the weird, the, the, the weird thing about it is like, why did I do that? Why did I? Well, I definitely didn't. Something came over me in that in that moment. But I think feel like it's kind of worn off now, though. 
it was something that was with me like right after our conversation that's, that's faded to the probably because of the speed dating though so I, I've had the positivity for like the next four or five days but then I had the speed dating and uh, well, so t- let's let, before we get to the speed dating tell me about the positivity we got to talk about smiling by the way do you smile when you talk to people yeah no normally no yeah so you got to start buddy smiling smiling is fucking op like smiling is like so when i was i read this book by dale carnegie called how to win friends and influence people it's a fantastic book and one of the rules that he says is smile and so i i actually practiced smiling and i know it sounds kind of silly but then i found that you know practicing smiling is super awkward but what I could do is like think about something that made me happy and then I would just let myself smile even though it felt a little bit weird. That's really what I practiced and then it becomes a genuine smile. And I found that ever since I started smiling, I actually do get better everything everywhere. And yeah, I got that I got that sense that, that it would be. But the thing is, I mean, intuitively it makes sense too, but the, the thing is, is getting the genuine smile is the hard part yep. because forcing it, forcing it doesn't really, it's not really uh, maintainable. Right. So let's practice. Uh, See, there you go. Ho- Good job. I'm hoping it's going to be infectious. I, I'll be honest with you, the quality on Discord today is not the best. Like I can oh. make out your mouth, but your eyes are just pixels for me. I don't know if it's like that on the stream, but maybe, um, like it's maybe it's really because... low quality. Oh, really low quality. Interesting. Like, 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 like almost like, oh, oh yeah, that's like a million times better. Okay. There we go. See, Dr. <laughs> K is not a boomer after all. I learn things from time. I'm glad I mentioned it. Cause yeah. I, I thought it'd just be awkward if I bought it up, but uh, now you fixed it now. Ah, see. So what were you doing? You thought it would be awkward if you brought it up. What were you trying to avoid there? Well, a couple of things. One is wasting time on the technical issues when we need to be getting on with the, the fixing me part. Yeah, let's just let's stay focused. No, no, no. But but see, see, this is the thing. There's there's you don't we don't need to stay focused because your avoidance of the awkwardness would have worsened your experience over the next hour. It's, it's actually doing it again anyway. Now I don't know why it's it's reverting. So <laughs> okay, let's try again. You feel like this is a waste of time, right? It, well, unless it you know unless it improves for the long term yeah How's yeah that? so like right now yeah like, so right now it's crystal clear and i, I have okay so let's see it what it, yeah if it does what it did again then like it degrades over the next 60 seconds <laughs> okay so that's okay so then then how do you feel is it, it fine is it fine the other way I, it's i i'm i can see you fine oh okay well, yeah okay it's at least like something so um yeah i think you should smile so try smiling don't you feel embarrassed uh smile come on let's see yeah. all right so think about something that's a this fake is not one. a genuine smile that's a fake though. one yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 right so I'm, like let's I'm let's see if answer. like you guys i want you guys to pay attention so like i want you to think about something happy what's happy I don't okay know. then just look at my face ready <laughs> there it is. Your face, awesome. Your face, your face is a good face, though. I like your face. I like your face too, man. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that's all it takes. Just, just okay. Now, now close your eyes. Close your eyes. Just think about my fucking face. See, there it is. Think about how silly and crazy I am. I don't know if those are good adjectives. For okay. You. What can you think of? Those? Like, do you have a pet? Not anymore. Okay. Well, that's a sad, sad face. <laughs> See, there's a <laughs> jet. <laughs> See, there you go. Okay, good. So, oh, it, beautiful, right? So, those are real smiles. Now, open your eyes. So, you can play around with it. I know it sounds weird. But, but the, the key to making a genuine smile, and by the way, human beings are very good at detecting fake smiles. And so this is what, oh, yeah. like, what's really hard about when you tell people to smile in interactions is they try to, they try to force themselves to smile, which becomes mm-hmm. a fake smile. And then the feedback yeah. that you got from other people is weird because they like look at your weird ass smile and it creeps them out. And then it makes you feel even more awkward, which in turn makes it harder for you to smile. And then you have to force your smile more and it creeps people out of them even more. So the, the, the key to offering a genuine smile 
is to like try to find something that you find warm or positive and think about that for a second and let it bubble up and let it show in your face. And if you start smiling more at people, they're going to start smiling at you back and then your you know, service will improve. But you'll also feel better about yourself because we have these tiny little um, circuits in our brain that when people smile at us, we feel better about ourselves. Because like when I smile at you like an idiot, ready? Yeah. No, yeah. Yeah, it works. How do you feel? At this point, it's getting a bit creepy. Okay, fine. It, I don't know. We've, we've like belabored the point a little bit. And okay, we're getting sorry. Into, analyzing it, overanalyzing it's kind of getting a bit. All right, all right. It works the first few times, though, for sure. Okay. <laughs> See, there you go. Good. How do you feel when you laugh and smile a little bit? What do you notice about yourself? Anything? It's kind of hard. Not really. No. Okay, okay. Maybe we can we can shift off of smiling for a second. So tell me about the positivity. The positivity of? You were saying that the positivity lasted yeah. four or five days. What, what do you mean by that? How do we understand what that, what that is? Uh, oh, it's optimism, I guess. I don't know. I've, it's just, it's just a, I've been searching for like the answer for some years now, at least like at least a decade. Yep. And you gave me something new to try. So that's optimism because most people I ask about it, you know, friends want to help you, but friends can only help you so much. They can only, you know, help you based on what they know and what their experience is like. Mm -hmm. And often that's not as helpful as they wish it was. Yep. And, but you gave me something genuinely new to try. Uh, you didn't really give me a lot of direction. It was just like catch the hope. Uh, I mean, when, when you say catch, normally I cup my hands like this, right? But that's not what, the, that's not what you mean by catch. Yep. Like, but I don't know how to do what you're asking me to do. You didn't really give a lot of direction on that. We kind of wrapped up right as you as you concluded. Yeah. With that, so it's it, it, even though I'm optimistic about it, it's kind of hard to run with it. Okay. So let's see if we can correct that deficiency from last time. So when I say catch the the optimism, I remember watching some martial arts movie where a guy optimism. would catch a fly with chopsticks. So there's like a fly buzzing around with like he's like with his, his ninja speed, he would catch it with chopsticks. That's kind of what I mean. So what I want you to do is notice within yourself when the hopelessness arises. And by catch it, what I mean is there are going to be times where you're going to interact. Like let's take the case of smiling at the person at the checkout counter when you bought the bread. You're going to have a thought that like, oh, let me try smiling. And then there's going to be another part of you that says, no, that's just dumb. It's not going to do anything. You know what I'm talking about? Well, I never thought about smiling. It just happened. I okay. don't really know why. Okay. No, I, it, but don't get me wrong. I, I never thought like, oh, I should smile here. I, I wasn't trying to do, I just caught the, I just thought about how hopeless something is. I don't know. So, so I, I know I didn't something give you. Something about it made me smile. I don't yeah. Know. So the, I, I don't know what you did, but you did it. You did what I asked you to do. And it's a little bit different for every person. Well, to a less, to, not exactly, because actually you asked me, more, more literally, you asked me to laugh. I, I never got quite that far. Like, smiling is about as far as I got. Okay, fine. I, I, not that I necessarily know that I would necessarily want to be walking around laughing at people. Why not? Maybe. <laughs> so, come on, don't ask me such rhetorical questions. Well, it's not rhetorical. I, because you, okay, come on. Because you'd look insane, wouldn't you? So? What's the so, downside I mean, like, of looking the, insane? Well, well, presumably that's the adverse effect. You want people to receive you well, not like as a crazy person. Whoa. See, therein, I think, lies the crux of your problem. You want people to receive you a particular way. Um, well, <laughs> so I think it's very common. But like, so this goes back to like, you were, you were a little bit upset. I don't know what word to use that you felt like you frustrated me because I, I did get frustrated and you wanted me to not be frustrated, right? You wanted me to say, Paul, I've really enjoyed this conversation. But instead yeah. I said, Paul, this conversation has been frustrating. So in your mind, you are trying to control my reaction. Well, not even that, it was even worse because it, it, it's not like you concluded with that. It's just, you were so frustrated that you just said that you were frustrated. It's, it's, like, it's even worse. But what's bad about me being frustrated? Yeah, okay. Well, yeah. 
No, no, no. So we sort of talked about it, but let's let's just play the tape through to the end, right? So this is exactly what okay. we need to do. I think your problem, Paul, is that you have some beliefs that you think are common sense or rhetorical, which actually need to be challenged. Okay, because if sure. you challenge, because that's the default programming you have in your mind. So what's wrong with frustrating me? Well, the, what's wrong with it is you might end up having more sympathy for CBT guy than for me by the end of it. it d did that happen? Not yet, but who knows by the end of this session. Right. So, so your <laughs> fear of frustration is that I will like you less. Yeah. Look at my face for a minute. Do I dislike you, Paul? At this moment in time, I would think not. Okay. Do you think, I mean, but why not? You frustrated me last time. Yeah, so obviously it's not excessive for you, but if I'm on the wrong path and I keep doing the same, making the same mistake, then I, I don't know. I'm then what is going to happen? People. What do you think is going to happen? Uh, eventually you'll not want to know me. Where, okay. Where do you get that idea? I mean, I, and, and, and this, I mean, this is just in general, but it's just like with people in general. I'm not Paul, saying have you driven someone away from through your behavior? I think I drive most people away through my behavior. Do you remember like a particular a particular time where no. you sort of really, really so like, but that? like, so we, we touched on this briefly, like last time, like I told you, like I, I had a rough start in my professional career. I, I lost. So I, I never worked anywhere for like a whole year. I could, I could maybe hold down a few months at a time. And then people would just get sick of me and, and, they'd, and they would, uh, let, I'd be let go. What, why would they get sick of you? Just because they, they thought I had very poor social skills is, is what, how they would term it. They didn't usually get very specific in ways that would actually be genuinely useful to me as a self-development tool, but the, that's the gist of it. And that's all I got was the gist of it. Hmm. So it, it sounds like you, you had good reason to believe that your actions and your words and your mannerisms will drive people away. Yeah, the only reason that I can string a f more than a few months together now is because I really tried harder to do better at that. And it must be working. Yeah. But obviously, I'm co cognizant of it so, a lot, as you've uh, underlined. So I, I think that, uh, you know, Paul, I think you have been working at it. And I think the unfortunate thing is that people don't teach us social skills. So I've been like, I've been sort of tossing around. So I've been writing a couple of books and I was thinking about, I had this crazy idea and started jotting some notes that I, I want to write a small manual about conversation and just how to talk to other people. Yeah. Like a, lot of, a lot of people call it common sense, but, uh, Common sense is not always. So no, it's not common sense, right? So I, I think no, no one actually teaches us. I mean, I don't think it's common sense at all. So the, the way that I talk to people is actually unlearning common sense. So I think being good at conversation is not actually doing what most people do. Conversation is a skill that you can learn and you can practice. Social skills can be learned and practiced and leveled up. And it sounds like you've been a little bit more thoughtful about your social interactions and you're noticing a difference. Yeah, and, and and yeah, and, yeah, and despite that, I still do worse than the average person at it. But yeah, that's yeah. a work in progress. So let me ask you this: Were there people before you started working that you kind of drove away through your behavior? <sighs> yeah, I guess so. Like who? Well, that's a tough one. Like, I guess even my friends, to be honest. Like, I can you sh do you mind sharing that with us? Yeah, there's there's not much to say about it. Like, so in high school, I had friends, but but after high school was over, we all went our separate ways. We didn't really keep in touch. So it's kind of like kind of it's kind of like the same in work. You know, you're all colleagues, but the, the, and and they'll celebrate your arrival. And they'll celebrate your leaving, but as soon as you leave, you won't hear from them a moment again. It's all just, it's all just 
it's almost like it's just fake, you know. Like, yeah. You mean, it's, it, not, it, 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 it's fine while it's, while it's convenient, while you're just, you're put in the same vicinity as each other, but it's not very real. Sounds like they don't really care about you as a human being. They care about you as like the mantle no, no, of but, but, coworker, <clears throat> right? So, yeah, yeah, at work, at, for sure. So, but the, the, there is a big difference though between like, so I, I do think that the high school friends I had were fairly, although I don't know why that is, because obviously the end effect is the same. It's like, well, as soon as we're no longer together, we're, we're No, 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 I, I, I think there are, there are differences, right? So in high school... We don't, no one teaches us how to stay in touch with people that we care about while we're in high school. That too is a skill that's learned, how to stay in touch with someone that you care about. Were you, uh, were you uh, attracted to any girls or anything like that in high oh, school? The, well, there weren't any. So oh. in, in the area that, in the area that I, yeah, in the area that I grew up, um, we have comprehensive and grammar schools. And all that means is like they're easy to get in schools and they're hard to get in schools. Like so, so the the grammar schools you usually have to like pass a bunch of extra tests and stuff to get into, and they're generally regarded as like the better place to be if you're like above, if if you're intelligent, I guess. But they're also single sex schools hmm. because I guess the thinking is that you know you can focus better on your work if you're not distracted by the opposite sex so it's the same for the so there's an all guys school there's an all girls school and the grammar schools and that miles apart um and, and i sometimes wonder i sometimes wonder if I, that's something i should regret because my sister didn't go to the grammar schools my sister went to the to the comprehensive and she grew up with guys and girls like normal and she's she's doing it well she's got two she's just got a second kid and she's two years younger than me. She's on on a normal track, right? Mm -hmm. So she's not an incel. <laughs> so you feel behind. I, I, oh, that's ex I mean that's exactly it. I, I feel like it, it's a weird, really weird place. It's like it's almost like I reg uh, I regret not being able to just do it all again, or or even. Just, like I almost feel like I want to start from that point, like from the high school point, which yeah. is which is which is a <laughs> very dangerous thing to say when you're 35 years old. But that, that, <laughs> <laughs> but but that, I, I I don't exactly mean it that way. It, it's just that what I get this I regret I regret that you can't make up for lost time. Like there's not something you can do yep. because so every everyone in everyone in my age range now, like if you if, you, if you're looking at people I actually can date girls are like in their thirties are looking to settle down. They're not looking for like someone who's got no experience. That's, that's a turnoff for them. They don't, it's how not. Do, how do you know that? How do I know it? I, I, I guess I must've just picked up. I, I don't know exactly. I guess I must've just picked it up from here and there. So, so, I'm going to say something that is going to be, you know, could be hurtful. It's not intended to be hurtful, but it is intended to be challenging. Um, you know, if you haven't really dated much, how do you know what girls want? I mean, well, who, 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 does anyone know what girls want? I mean, I don't know. That's, that's what I've been trying to figure out for a long time. Well, all, all I know is that it is, whatever it is, it's not me. That, that too, how do you know that? Well, that's evident. How? No, no one wants me. <laughs> that's really evident. I, 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 with, I feel like I have been over a, a bunch of things already. Like I, I did like a dozen speed dating things. I did a bunch of, hung, hung out, I told you about hanging out in bars and going clubbing and doing this and that. Yeah, so, so, so I don't know if, Paul, they ever actually meet you. I think they meet the person that you think you should be. They don't I, th I, think, I think they meet the person that you think that they're looking for. And I think... But I don't, I don't know what they're looking for, though. But sure you do. You just said, you just told us what they're looking for, right? So you have an idea of what they're looking for, and I think you try to be that person. And I think what they're seeing is essentially fake smile Paul instead of real smile Paul. And they find that creepy. 
which I, I mean, cre- fake smile, Paul, creeps me out. Even when I smile excessively at you, it creeps you out. I think this goes back to what I was saying earlier about like, you try to avoid so much to like evoke any kind of negative emotion in another human being that you're like, that's not, you can't be relaxed and authentic. Like if you walk into this conversation, you're like, oh, I can't frustrate Dr. K because I want him to like me. I understand why you feel that way. And you can't make me like you. And even if you frustrate me, like that's not going to stop me from liking you. What's going to stop me from liking you is if you beca- if you stop giving a shit and stop trying. Like you can piss me off, that's okay. You can make me sad, you can make me disappointed, you can you can even make me angry with you. And all of those things, I know this sounds absolutely crazy, but like just think about this for a second. Like who do you think are the people that you get the most angry with in life? Who do you think I get the most angry with in life? Like you have this assumption that if people get angry with you, they're no longer going to like you, right? I think you diminish your chances, yeah. Yeah. So who do you think I get the most angry with in life? If I had to guess, I'd probably say the people you're around the most. So like maybe your kids or your wife. Absolutely. Absolutely correct. The people who piss me off to no end are number one, my wife. (laughs) top of the list number two arguably higher than my wife is my younger child older child is just really really awesome like sweet little child is really sweet too she's just super hard-headed and is defiant and doesn't accept that i am the parent and she is the child and it pisses me off to no end bit of a guess on my part though because i don't really have any experience of yes very good You, you don't have any experience about what people want and what people don't want my point is that If you actually look at relationships and you think about, you ask a hundred people who pisses you off the most, I don't know what they're going to say, but if you actually observe who they express their anger to, it's usually the people that are closest to them. Sometimes it's kind of sad because we give the worst versions of ourselves to the people that we're closest to, and we give the best versions of ourselves to strangers, right? You're going to be the most polite to the, the person at the checkout counter, whereas you'll be you know, more demanding of like people that you live with, which is weird. Like, shouldn't it be the opposite? But it's not. So I think you've really got to take a step back and and think a little bit about, you know, I think fake smile and real smile is really a good analogy of the way that you try. So I, the way that you interact with other people seems to me to be based on an impression that you have of what they want. And I think the way to find a good partner in life is to be you and let them pick. Like, it's not you picking them, it's them picking you. But, like, be authentic about who you are. I I, I don't know if that's true. Maybe if you're trying to to convince me of that on a subconscious level, then I, I would probably find it hard to deny. But if you think I go around trying to be a model of someone I have in my head, that's definitely not the case. I don't think it is quite as conscious as that, but I do think that you are Definitely very, not, no. you are very, very concerned about the opinions of others in your interactions. You know, that's, that's correct. Yeah. And the more concerned you are about the opinions of others, the less authentic you become. That might also be true. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, and I think this comes from this core belief that you have that you are not likable by others. Right, so like this comes back to this uh, the central well, idea. Well, not well, not not without putting a lot of effort into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the yeah. thing is, I, I don't I don't disagree that you have evidence to support that view. I think you do have evidence to support that view. I don't think you're a dumb guy. I think you're a smart guy. So I think your conclusions that you come to have a lot of evidence behind them. And I'm telling you to to run a different experiment. Right? I'm telling you that whatever you did that day at the checkout counter where you were able to smile at someone, and somehow that was related to hopelessness, you don't really know how it works, but that you decided to just in that moment be a slightly different person, and the world received you in a slightly different way. Yeah. What's the experiment we're running, though? I think... 
I think you should try to be you. If, if I'm honest, there's never really been a moment in, prior to this where I thought I wasn't being me. Okay. Excellent observation. Right? So now... So if that's the case, it's quite a revelation. So, so now, yeah, I mean, that's why I think you're stuck. So now I want you to just, so now we come to a little bit of observation. We can talk about a couple of other things. Okay. So like, I've got to ask you, so I don't know if this is, I've got to ask you, Paul, and also we should, you know, ask Twitch chat too. Like if you want to have another kind of cathartic moment, we, this is not the direction to go. Do you want one of those? I don't know. Was that? In the script this time, do we have to climax with it? Nope. I mean, I don't know how to. I don't know. I don't know how to bring those on. But yeah. I'm guessing that the more cerebral things are, people don't get to that. But if you want to talk about practicalities, we can talk about that. But it's going to be dry, and it's going to be less entertaining, and it's going to be more helpful. So the real challenge about Twitch streaming is that there are things that are helpful, and there are things that are entertaining, and there's some that are both, and there's some that are neither. So if you want to talk about, you know, the function of your mind, which is what I th really think would be helpful, then we can do that. If you want to explore like your difficulties and stuff like that, if you want to attack those core beliefs and try to dismantle them, that's going to be a little bit more emotionally of a roller coaster. So we can attack your core beliefs about like, you know, how you view yourself or what we can do is give you like, we don't have to do one or the other. It's just which one we're going to focus on. We can talk to you yeah. about how to be more of yourself. I love both, to be honest, but you said you have an opinion on which one would be more help helpful, which is the first, so let's do that. Okay. So, are you your mind? I want, I want to say yes, even though I presume you're coming at it from a perspective of no. Okay, so, so say what you believe. Don't, don't give me the right answer. Give me your answer. Right answer doesn't help anyone. Give me your answer. Yeah, yeah, I, I am my mind, yeah. Okay. So, like, let me ask you something. Um, let me just think about this for a second. So if someone has, so, so if someone is kind of relaxed and enjoying themselves at a party, and if another person is super socially anxious, and thinking and worrying and thinking lots of thoughts about what other people think, which one of them, do you think both of them are equally themselves? Yes, if that's, the, if that's the way they are. Okay. And let's take the socially anxious person for a second, and let's put them in an environment where they're not socially anxious. So let's say that they're playing like D&D &D with their friends. So in both cases, there are like eight people around, but in one case, it's like close friends of theirs. In another case, it's strangers. So let's say eight strangers versus eight friends. And in one case, one person has a lot of social anxiety and their, their mind is thinking lots of thoughts. And in the other one, their mind is kind of just participating in the engaging with other people in kind of like a more simple way. Do you think that both of those people are equally the same person? Or do you think that, and this is a leading question, so do you think that the, the anxious thoughts kind of interfere with like the, them being themselves? Right. So I'm actually offering a hypothesis as opposed to a question with that statement. So in both scenarios, it's the same person or the, I'm asking if like the personness is the same in both scenarios. I mean, but it is the same guy. It's the same guy. Scenarios. Just two different right, scenarios. Okay. Are they the, you're asking me, is, is this the same person-ness? Yep. Like, let me put it this way. If yeah. you were to observe the the D and D interaction from behind like a two way mirror, and if you were to observe the party interaction from behind a two way mirror, do you think you would get the same sense of who that person is? Or would you say that okay. one observer would get to know one, like that person better in one scenario as opposed to the other? 
I, I would say that you wouldn't really get to know them fully until you observed both. Okay. Because they're both facets of that person. Okay. Both their anxiety and also their comfort. Uh, their comfort. I completely agree that you would learn, uh, you would get a more complete picture. So, but do you think that one is worth more than the other in terms of like understanding who that person is? I mean, I can see where you're leading me. You're, tr you're trying to, I guess you're trying to say that the, the person who's comfortable and is open is m more being themselves and, you know, is, is out of their shell, whereas the other guy is closed up and, and hiding that. But yeah, right. do you, I mean, I, you can see where I'm leading you. Absolutely. But do yeah. you, do you want to go there? Like, do you agree with that? <clears throat> yeah, that's, yeah, sure. Okay. So I, I think part of the, the reason it's hard to agree with that is because it implies that the anxiety is kind of false. The anxiety is very real and is a part of that person's life, but that's not really who they are. Right. The anxiety kind of like anxiety is something that layers on top of you and keeps you from being who you are. That's my experience and my hypothesis. Okay. Right. In the same way that depression that is not who a person is, it layers on top of them and keeps them from being themselves. Anxiety layers on top of you and keeps you from being yourself. Yeah. Okay. Fine. It makes sense. Right. So I, 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 I I guess the bit that just doesn't, isn't so clear is like, well, what is yourself then? Exactly. So, so that's the question and that's the question we have to answer. So the first thing to understand is that we are not our mind. So our mind is just a thinking machine. And so in the same way, like Paul, are you your hand? I, I'm willing to, I'm willing to take the whole it didn't really occur to me until I was in my late teens, but I'm, I'm willing to admit that my body is maybe not me. I mean, it's, it's kind of weird because like, if, like I don't think I'm going to exist for very long if I don't have my body, but. Sure. But um, your body my, is my body. not you, right? There's, there's a you-ness that transcends your body. Like if you lose a hand, do you stop yeah. being Paul? No. Right. I mean, sure, like that's a reality, like your life has changed and you may change as a result of it. But Paul does not, it's not like if you lose an arm, you lose 20% of Paul. Like you're still Paul. And in the same way, it's not like if, you're, if your mind is, if your anxiety goes away, you're still you. If your anxiety is there, you're still mm -hmm. you. You're just buried under yeah. the anxiety. Does that yeah, make I mean, sense? There's a thought, there's, yeah, there's a thought that brains in a jar are also still the person, right? I mean... Sure, it, you know. <laughs> maybe, right? So yeah. the point, the point though, is that we have some amount of being, our you-ness, that transcends certainly the body, mm, and yeah. I am yeah. hypothesizing and I'm putting forth to you also the mind. And if you want to understand that, the best thing that you can do is meditate. And and not, uh, not just not just parts of the mind, but the whole mind, all of the mind. Right. So okay. this is where, where there's this idea. Yogis say that we, what we really are is consciousness and that mind is just like the hand. It's like a piece of us, but that there is something that exists that is outside of mental activity. And if you've watched stream or if you've meditated before, you know, sometimes people get to this state of mind. Actually, we had a great stream on, on Monday with someone who has tried a lot of meditation and like just didn't fucking get it because they never achieved yeah, a no mind state. Right. It was and, Dom. Yeah. So like, if yeah, you just look at Dom's face, like he got there because he's like, oh, this is really awesome. I loved it because that's yeah, what meditation yeah. is. And it's an experience of self outside of your mind. And the problem is that we don't understand that because we don't spend a whole lot of time outside of our mind. In fact, we spend most of our time inside our mind. And so we think that that's who we are. And so it's kind of like, you know, we've spent all our life in the water. So we don't know what it is to like walk on land. And it's just, we just sp spend things in a particular state. So then this goes back to you and how are we going to help you? And it's this idea that when you're with someone, you have all of these thoughts about being a particular person, right? So you don't want to make them dislike you. So you're careful with what you say. You don't want to make them this. You don't want to make them that. And in some ways that helps you 
right? So it, it improves some of your social interactions. You're more intentional and things like that. But it also is not like truly the relaxed and real you. And sometimes through effort, what we actually get better at is being the relaxed and real us. So I, I don't know which one you're doing, but. So I think that well, the, like the right basic. Now? No, not right now. Just when you're at work, for example, you say that you've gotten better with your social interactions, right? Yeah, I, I don't I don't feel like I've ever been able to. <laughs> I used to I used to criticize other people for doing it because it seemed like other people like acts at work, especially so outside of London. Yeah. Before I, before I came. You, you were about to say you, you you said I used to criticize other people for what? Yeah. yeah so so like a lot of people have like work personas. I, I remember like once jumping in the car with uh, the guy I used to work with, uh, who's, I mean, used to sit next to and his fiance who also worked there. The moment they when we, when we left work and got into that car, it's like they completely. I'd never even seen them like this. They, they, they suddenly became themselves for the first time. Uh, I, I, even when he hung around with me at work, and it was just him and me, it still wasn't like that. It just he just became completely not completely completely, but quite completely different person. It was shocking to me. I, I, I was kind of aware, it was so it was so thick not just from him, but from everyone, that it, it was still, I could still percept it even without being able to see the contrast. Because I only got to see the contrast in the people who I really obviously got close to. So the to, question is, but, who are you at work? But who I thought you? I was not like them. <laughs> and now you're kind of like telling me that I am. Absolutely. But, but, but not only at work, but just all the time or something like that. Yeah. I think you were a different person whether you were alone or whether you were with someone that you're, you know, like speed dating. Speed dating sounds fucking awful to me. I've like never done it, but it sounds like the, some of the most artificial, contrived, inauthentic trash that you can possibly do. And like right now, Paul, our biggest problem, our biggest, I mean, we have lots of biggest problems, but yeah, one of the do. biggest problems that I see in society is that we're breeding a culture of inauthenticity. We're breeding- London's a full of fake people. Yep. People are becoming more and more fake and social media is making us more and more and more fake. Social media is about showing just one slice of the pie to the rest of the world. And so what happens yeah, is the rest of the world looks at one, the best slice of pie that everyone else has. And we see our whole pie, both the beautiful parts and the kind of undercooked parts and the parts that sort of collapsed in the oven. And we see everyone else's perfect pieces of pie. And we're breeding a culture of inauthenticity. We're getting disconnected from who we really are. And I think that you, your interactions and social situations are so hell bent on controlling because you're afraid of people like leaving that you try really hard to not make them leave. And then like the, the unfortunate thing is like, that's a vicious cycle. I think the reason you feel so stuck is let's just play this through a couple of cycles. Okay. So you're concerned that people are going to leave. So you try really hard and the harder you try, what happens to the quality of your smile? The harder you try to smile, smile. Do it. See, that's actually a real one. Is it? Yeah. What if I told you it's not? Oh, it's not. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I thought I, I thought it was after real. All. I'm curious. Yeah, that was. Kept. I was. Yeah, no. I mean, this is how I get through the job interview, isn't it? That looked real to me. Do it again. That actually looks pretty real. Oh, but hey, this is those pixels, man. Okay. <laughs> See, there's a good one. <laughs> Right. And, and, and so I think, I think the more, the harder you try, the generally speaking, the worse the smile looks. And then what happens yeah, yeah. is it reinforces, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So the harder you try, the creepier your smile looks and the more that you drive people away, which reinforces the idea that you drive people away, which makes yeah. you try to smile twice as hard. Yeah. yeah most, of, most, yeah. Right, and if you I, smile twice, I mean, as hard, I did. I, I did tell you I don't usually try to smile. I guess I do with the speed. No, no, I, I'm using that as an analogy. Right. So I yeah. think you 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 be inauthentic. You try to be the person mm -hmm. that they want you to be, or that you think they want you to be, and that inauthenticity people detect because we're good at that, and they're not actually interested in you because they don't. They, you're not a real person. You're fake smiling them, like with your whole being, and then what happens? 
is like the more you drive them away, the more you double down and the harder you have to try to fake smile. The harder you try to fake smile, the worse off you, you, the creepier it becomes and the more you drive people away. So this cycle happens over and over and over again until it becomes truth in your mind. And the truth in your mind is that no matter how hard you try, people don't like you, right? And and that th- thing is that that truth is like re- supported by data because you tried a little bit and then you tried a lot and then you tried like Hercules and then you tried like 10 Herculeses and no matter how hard you try, the response is always the same. People do not like you. You know, you know what? You're, you're probably 100% right on that because one pattern, so I mentioned I, I went speed dating like a dozen times. I actually got a date out of them when do you which 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 so out of those 12 they they were kind of like roughly in in the same sort of time period but which which if you had to number them one through 12 which one do you think i got the data out of one yeah it was either one or two i don't remember but it was it was towards the start and it seemed to get harder and harder and i I think you're that's why i say you're 100 right yeah (laughs) quite possibly true yeah quite possibly true i'll take it So now the question is, what do we do about it, right? If you try really, really hard to get people to like you and and it gets them to not like you, what I need you to do is catch that effort. Catch the effort. Catch yourself thinking, oh, if I don't do this, they will not think this. And instead, ask yourself, what do I want to talk to this person about? Like, don't try to talk. So I actually did do that. I actually did do that at, at, at the last speed dating. I think some of the smiles might have been a little fake. I don't know. Okay, so tell me about the last I, speed dating. Let's talk about that. Well, there's not a lot to say. But uh, can you tell me about speed so, dating in general? I mean, until until uh, the last couple of months, I hadn't done it for like seven years. I put it on hold, but so I'm not really like an expert or anything. But you, you just. You, <laughs> The girls will sit down and you pick a table at random and then every four minutes you rotate. Is, is that what you're asking about? Or yeah, sure. You want to get... And so w- what was it like yeah. to go speed dating? Well, this time I took care of the external, like you said. I, I, I really dressed up like what I... What, I guess in this case I was trying to be like what I assumed they want to be. Like, so I, you know, I, I don't even like wearing like... No, normally I wear stupid fancy color shirts and stuff I, I, you know but i wore plain because that's what i was advised to do with a with a you know a blazer i just spent 80 quid on um some new shoes uh, nothing like i would ever normally buy which was also recommended by a girl at work so you know they they they, they i got i took some advice and I, I dressed myself up in a way that i wouldn't ne- i was comfortable with but would have never looked like before at all sure um <laughs> uh, yeah. how did you uh, feel yeah. Wearing that stuff, I actually felt pretty cool. I, I, I actually, in, uh, but also I kind of hated myself as well because I don't. Because <laughs> it's, it, it's not really what I wanted to look like. It's just. Yeah. What do you want to look like? And end up looking like everyone else. I, I like to fucking. I like to look like a clown, to be honest. I usually wear like ridiculous, like loud colors and stuff. Like they call it like peacocking in like, but uh, that's not really what I'm, uh, that's not why. I, I, I don't even really know why. I just like colors. Okay. I just like standing out. But also not. So that's weird. Like, I, I mean, I, I <laughs> like I'm not, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm an introvert, obviously, and I don't have, I, I'm, I'm also isolated a lot of the time. Um, really really come into my own with this corona thing so i'm already an expert in self-isolation but yep. um well, what do you mean by you like to yeah but i, I mean it, but, but it's not like just wearing bright colors just makes you a, like people want to come and talk to you or anything it doesn't really change anything it just changes how you're perceived probably but it doesn't why really do you like anything. wearing bright colors i don't know probably because i just like bright colors huh? yeah right so i think i think right there is a difference one is you doing what you think the world wants and one is doing what you want yeah, of course. But I, but I, you know. So I, I do think it's worth exploring. I'm We're not just saying that just things. be, you know, don't change as a human being and don't explore other wardrobes. Like, I think if you're in the dating scene, it makes sense to, like, try to present your best self. 
right? So I don't think you should yeah. be inauthentic, but I think that you should be as polished as you can possibly be. Yeah, I, I was I was looking pretty polished. Yeah, so I think that like a nice blazer and a nice pair of shoes is great, but if you want to wear like a more flamboyant shirt, then by all means go for it. Yeah, I don't know. If you're telling me to be myself, then I guess I would do, but I don't know that it would net me any. Okay, so hold on for a second. Real gains. Because now can we can we acknowledge that you're not actually being yourself? When? Like, do you acknowledge that? Or do you still think that you're being yourself when you go out and date? I think I am. I thought I was. Okay, but at least when it comes to clothing, it sounds like you're not. I don't even, like, I don't, I don't even know. The, the, <laughs> the whole reason I even wear the stupid stuff I wear now is because it was originally a recommendation from the very first girl at work who actually got me fired that we talked about last time. <laughs> I don't even know. Like, if, if I, I don't have a style. I just, I don't care about clothing. I don't care. I wear anything. I mean, did you dress up for this interview or session or whatever we're doing? <laughs> did you think about what you were wearing when you came on here? Yeah, kind of. Because, I mean, it's recorded, isn't it? So, so like, I mean, how do you, how comfortable do you feel with what you're wearing? I mean, it's, this is my dating outfit without the blazer. I mean, I'm pretty comfortable with it. Okay. I think you look sharp, man. I mean, you can't see the rest of me, but yeah, that's all right. Yeah, I mean, you're right. I can't see the rest of you. Are you, are you like an octopus from below the belt? A couple of people have commented, like, yeah, this guy doesn't seem that fat. But I mean, if I, if I stand, I mean, I, you probably did see when I went to get the, the picture. So you may be fat. That's okay. Like most, like 40% of the world is overweight. A lot of them find love. Like you can do some things to lose weight and you can be more confident in yourself. Absolutely. But it also doesn't make you unlovable. Right? Like people. I do, who... I do wonder. Whenever, when it, it, it's not so much the case out in the suburbs, but especially in London, like all the couples you see on the street, they're all two good looking couples. Like it makes sense. You don't see a lot of fat dudes with a, a girl of any size. I mean, I think you should look closer. I'm looking all the time. I think that you have a cognitive bias that filters what you see. No, because when I do see it, I'm like, wow, that's rare. Okay. You see, you I see mean, a, a could fat, be wrong. Was, yeah. Could be wrong. I think I think most of the most of the couples in the world's in, in the world are fives. They're not eights. They're not nines. Yeah, in the world, I'm just saying. I I I said specifically in London, though. I, I feel like there's a lot of very beautiful people here, and that that's kind of what the city attracts. Sure. And. Uh, Paul, how do you think how do you think this conversation is going? Is this how is this for you? This is a train wreck like last time. <laughs> not as bad as last time, but. <laughs> What what do you mean by train wreck? <laughs> I mean like what the what are, I don't know. Maybe it maybe it like comes I don't know, maybe it, <laughs> I mean, a train wreck because there's no there's no focus. I yeah. don't know. I'm, I'm I don't know. What should we focus on? <laughs> I don't know. I I thought it was terrible last time, but then when I went back and watched it again I realized that it was, it was fine if I would just let go a little bit more. It was because I was trying to oversteer it. I told you at the start, right? Mm -hmm. So I mean, it might not be as bad as I think it is right now. So I'm kind of, do you think, so you, you th uh, earlier you said there were some things that were going to be difficult to talk about, but that you felt like they were important or something. Can you just help me understand what you said earlier? Like you had, you had planned on talking about some stuff, but you thought it was going to be no. difficult? No, I hadn't. <laughs> I, I don't remember quite what you had said. Yeah, no, was, th what I said was that my anxiety drove me to visit some darker places in my past that I thought I would ha would be obligated to talk about in order to fix me, but obviously that's not the case. Why is that not obviously the case? No, I'm saying it's not the case. I know. Why do you th why do you say that? Well, because we've never had to broach those topics. And are you fixed? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> well, this is it. This is this is part of the anxiety. Is is I feel like I'm probably like a hundred sessions away from being fixed, and we don't have. I know I don't know how many sessions we have, but I know we don't have a hundred. So, do you think that those those dark parts of your past are part of what's holding you back? I 
I don't, are they holding me back? I, maybe. I, I never got closure on some some things. I, I don't like, I, I, I just don't know, like, am I, like, was I in the wrong? Like, am I fundamentally a bad person? And is that why I can't connect with anyone? Yeah. So I think if that thought is floating around in your head, it's going to interfere with your ability to present your best self. Right. So the hypothesis we came up with last time was that it's not actually that the world doesn't. I mean, I don't believe that you can't find love. I, I, I believe that what's holding you back is yourself. And I, I think that going forward, we've got a choice. We can continue to meander as we have been, or we can talk about that, like whatever the dark stuff is and where you got the idea that you're, you're destined to be this way. Cause that sounds relevant to me. But last week you you seemed pretty confident we, that we were, we were on the right track and we didn't need to. Talk. I mean, you seemed pretty sure you were, like with your in your convictions you would seem pretty confident that we were going in the right. You know, you you were handing out pearls left and right, and and I thought we were going to end up this week talking about how to catch hopelessness and, and hone hone that. Um, the only reason you, you're even aware that there's something else that we're not talking about is because I mentioned it briefly in the in the preamble. Yep. Which I maybe shouldn't have done. I, I, cause, I mean, because if it's important to talk about that, wouldn't you have discovered it organically, like without me just presenting it to you like that? I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love how emphatically, no. <laughs> I mean, l let me explain something. Organic discovery is based on little preambles. Right? That's what that is. I can't, I can't, I'm not a mind reader. I can only work with what you give me. Yeah. I don't, uh, yeah. It's just that last week, every time I tried to give you something, you, you kept shutting me down with, that's you, that's your mind doing that thing again. It seemed like I was just giving you the same shit. I, I wasn't, wasn't really helping when I was giving you more, more stuff. <clears throat> I'm sorry for shutting know. you down. No, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know. It just seemed like you were already absolutely sure about sure. where this was all headed and everything. That was last I, I week. You had it. Yeah, I know. Okay. I don't know what this week is. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you what this week is. It just seems like you're not listening. All right. Tell me one more time. I think we got to talk about the dark stuff. Oh, well, <laughs> Not, do we, have we got enough time left for that? I don't know. Only one way to find out. <laughs> why, we ha why do we have to talk about it? Because we tried to not talk about it. I tried to respect your feelings, and we've been meandering for the last half hour to 45 minutes. Is it not useful meandering? Would you? Sure. Does it feel useful so... to you? I mean, you said you said it it wouldn't feel transformative, though. So I, I don't. I, I guess I waylaid the expectation. Why do you that it would care so useful. much about what I said before? Well, if I didn't care what you said, if I'm not taking on board the things you say, what's the point in? Fair um, point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do you do you do you, do you want to renege on any of those things? Is that? <laughs> what I think we should do is let the last conversation be the last conversation and for this conversation to be this conversation. Right. Should okay. you learn from the last conversation? Absolutely. But I don't think that we should let, I mean, honestly, this, this feels very avoidant to me. And I think that one sign of avoidance is meandering conversations.
right? So, so it seems like there's something that you really do not want to talk about, and it's not my place to bully you into talking. Sweetie, Daddy's a little bit busy. Honey. <laughs> the ultimate avoidance. Darling, can you please, can you please go outside and close the door? <laughs> Honey, your pants are falling down. <laughs> okay, go put your babies to sleep in the other bedroom. They can't sleep in here. There are too many lights on. So you've got a 30-second break to figure out what we're talking about, Paul. Baby, yeah. can you please go outside? Darling, Daddy's working. <laughs> okay, can you put your babies to sleep and then get going? Okay, thank you. What do you think, man? Uh, about? I mean, you want to talk about what you need to talk about? I, I, I don't know what I need to talk about. What, what did you, what, you said there were some difficult things to talk about. What are you referring to? Can you close the door, honey? Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I... It, it's difficult to talk about the few relationships I have had with women in my life. If you can even call them that. Tell me about them. I mean, one we already touched on is like, it was getting fired from my first job. Mm -hmm. That was probably the start. Because there's not much before that, because like I said, I, I went to an all-male high school. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah. That, 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 that whole thing was just so... <laughs> It's so ridiculously, you, it's almost hard to even believe it, how ridiculous. So I, I only worked there for like six months. Maybe seven or eight, actually. But, but one day, my, my boss comes to me and he says, D don't go for lunch today. You just, I need you to just stay here. And he didn't say anything more than that. Maybe you have to rewind a little bit more than that. Um, so obviously I, I met this girl at work and we, st we, st we started going out to lunch together like every day. Just, it just her and me. Were you attracted to her? No, not at first. And no, and from the outset she made it clear like she's got a boyfriend that is just, we're just, we're just friends. That's fine. But I guess the long story short is like after a month of doing this, then yes, I started to become a little bit attracted to her like after like a month, which, which was, which was, awkward for me because I already knew that that's like that's not 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 acceptable but I, I told her directly that, that that that's how I was how I was feeling and that I hoped that she would push back but she didn't and that just made it really awkward for me so I kind of just tried to break it off like just let's let's just stop which she didn't want to do either so I remember I sent her an email which so like I say we're going out to lunch all the time, but like, even when I'm supposed to be working, like half the time I'm emailing, we're just emailing each other back and forth. So we're, we're like, we're in, in each other's heads like a lot of the time. What do you mean by awkward? Anyway, huh? What, awkward when? You said, you said it made it awkward for me because I started to have feelings for her and, and she had a boyfriend. Yeah, well, so obviously and that's not going to work, is it, right? So... So I, I sent her something that was a little bit... What is the feeling of awkward? So uh, it's it's not going to work is an analytical conclusion. Yeah. What what is what does awkward mean? Like what what was your experience of awkward? I mean, I don't know what you're asking because it's nothing more than I already told you. The, ex the experience is, so I'm like, I'm, I'm literally walking out to lunch with her one day and I'm actually just like a few paces behind and I find myself, <laughs> I find myself just gazing at, at her figure, like, you know, and I'm like, hang on a minute. <laughs> this is no good, you know? Uh, <laughs> I wish, you know, up until that point, that was not really a problem. I was just like, it was just she was just a friend like 100 percent genuinely and at, at some point i realized that that doesn't seem to still be the case like in my head 
And so when I told her this, I expected her to get a bit upset and be like, oh, yeah, to conclude the same thing that I did. And that like, oh, well, you what did to... you say to her? I pretty much just what I told you. I, I just I don't know actually. I don't fucking remember. It was, it was fifteen years, uh, twelve years ago, or something. Mm-hmm. I don't remember what I told her, but I told her something along the lines of, "I feel like I'm getting like a bit attracted to you, or something." I don't know. Fuck knows what I said, but she she the the thing is, she didn't react the way I expected. Mm-hmm. She just seemed okay with that. Which, which I didn't. So I sent, so I sent her an email, which is a little bit rude, and uh, in the hopes that that would like force her to like want to break it off. So then it would be mutual, it'd be easier. Um, and it did work. But why did you want her to break it off? Be, I don't know. I guess because so that it wouldn't be awkward, because she's got a boyfriend. That's why. Who she lives with who she came to this country to be with, because they met online. So like, it doesn't, you know. So yeah, I, I <laughs> didn't want to be any, any part of like, something weird. And, and she was saying stuff like, she wanted to bake cakes for me at the weekend and all this stuff. And I was like, well, this is a bit too far in it. Because I mean, you, he's, <laughs> he's probably going to ask like, what are they for? And what are you going to like say? Like, what the fuck is all this? Like, I, I don't know. So, I, I wanted. I wanted to. I wanted to be grounded, and and it seemed like things were getting a little bit carried away. So I don't know. What, what was getting carried away? We were, or she was, or something. I don't know. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. But look, I, I don't want to get because it's a long story at this at this pace. So, in any case. Uh, I, we, we managed Hold on. to. What are you trying to fast forward past? Why are you trying to fast forward? <laughs> Nothing particularly. I'm not. I'm not leaving anything out. I'm just. I'm just conscientious that you could digress for, for, forever, and it wouldn't wouldn't add anything to the story. So. I'm. I'm not so concerned about the story. What I'm concerned about is how your experience of the story. Right. And that, yeah. that, I mean, you keep on using the word awkward, but like awkward is, awkward is kind of a description. It's not really, awkward usually means like a conflict of feelings. Sure. There was a conflict of feelings. What were those feelings? <laughs> oh God. I don't know, man. It... Who's getting frustrated now? It's like, it's like, I like her, but also I don't like the way she's, I don't know. I like her. I, I, it's like and dislike, I guess. I don't know. What do you like? <sighs> I, I like that she was a girl who was into me because that's not happened really ever since. And what do you dislike? I dislike that it's fake. <laughs> like that it that it that it that it's all. It doesn't sound fake to me. I'm sure you dislike something about it. But what is what is fake to you about it? Well, they, they call it leading on, lead, leading you on, right? Because it's not because she's already she's already comfortable. She's already like so. Whatever happens, she goes home to her to her boyfriend every evening. So, like, that's what I don't like about it. How does that make you feel? Like a, a fucking pawn. Yep. Like I'm just being I'm just being played, you know. How is she playing you? Because she's just using me to stroke her ego, I guess. I don't fucking know. Yeah, I don't know if it's quite like that, but I mean, I. What sounds really, you know, Paul. I think the. Hmm. 
trying to think about how to say this. I think one of the hardest things to deal with is when you want something your entire life, you've always wanted something and that thing comes along, but it's like conditional. So you, you, you Sorry. broke off from over there. So, so I think one of the hardest things is when you want something in life and then it comes along, but it's conditional or there's a piece of it that you, you know, it's, it's kind of like window shopping. Like you can see it and she's right there, but there's something in the way. And that sounds to me to be almost more painful. It seems like almost like it's kind of weird because here's a girl who's clearly into you. You tell her she has you have feelings for her. But she never she never said that though. She she made it like I said very clear from the start. What the ground it, it, it would it, we're just friends. Um, so That's she may it. have she may have said what the ground rules are, but I think she made it very clear that those are not the ground rules. Because after you confessed that you were attracted to her, how did she respond? Yeah, I know you could, I know you could interpret it that way. I mean, do you think that that's an un? I mean, you're the you're the one who interpreted. You but were it like, goes back to this colleagues thing, right? Like, she, so she she's never so she is spending quite an absurd amount of time with me at work. Pretty much all the time she can, given that our desks are apart. It, it, we're, we're out to lunch which is the time we can be together and in the winter and the Yeah, so, but at the same time, she doesn't want to substitute any of her time with her boyfriend to be with me when it's no longer convenient. Like she, there was no after work or anything like that. Mm. And, and neither of us was seeking that, but I'm just, just, I'm just pointing that out. Like, yeah. How does that it's pretty feel? clear? And of course it feels shit. I mean, I, mm. actually, I don't know that it does. It, no, cause I, neither of us wanted that. You didn't want it, that? It just, it, no, it just occurred to me really? one after like a month. No, at the time I genuinely didn't, as far as I can recall. Because that, that's the thing. I, I want, as soon as I noticed that I was starting to feel attracted, I wanted to break it off. Why? That was my reaction. Why? Because I didn't see it working any, I didn't see it working any other way. Okay. I, I, I thought it, I thought it'd be more like, I thought I was being a, I guess because I genuinely believed in the, in the story that we were friends and that I was being a bad friend if I'm attracted to it, that, that doesn't work. That's, that's what I believed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think that that makes sense to me. I think that there was conflict because you clearly had feelings for her. You were attracted to her and you also felt like she was using you. Yeah. Okay. What is that? What, what? You said yes, but you were very dismissive. I'm yeah. No, I'm just frustrated because I thought I thought we were gonna get. I, I don't know. Why. I just thought we were gonna. I was gonna lay out the story, and there's like so much more of it to, to tell that takes place after all this. But yeah. So it's frustrating <laughs> that I'm asking you questions instead of letting you continue to tell the story. Yeah, a little bit. Okay, I apologize. Please continue. Because I I'm not keeping track of time but neither am I <sighs> yeah so okay so I, I successfully managed to break it off by, by kind of like slightly insulting her a little bit um, and, and, and we stopped seeing each other uh, we stopped going out to lunch you we stopped her away. yeah yeah exactly uh, and that was fine that was it was a bit abrupt but you know for the for the, the weeks that followed the it seemed to be fine until so then we come back to where, where I was so my, my boss comes to me says don't go to lunch today and, and for some reason I felt really nervous about that and I started drinking like a lot of water like too much water like I was getting buzzed off it um, uh, turns out my paranoia was not misplaced though because it was it was I couldn't have even I couldn't have imagined what was about to happen so it, it, he's Somewhere during the lunch time, when I would have been having lunch, he says, "Okay, it's like a, it's like a multi-story building." He says, "Like we, we're going to go down to the, the second floor." And no one ever goes to the second floor. I mean, what? It's just like a bunch of meeting rooms, right? There's not there's not even a company on that floor. Um, so we go into one of the rooms there, and they just ask me to wait there. And uh, then this guy I've never seen before 
uh, enters the room. Uh, and I, I would later learn that he was from a consulting company. From, so this is before I went to London. He was from a consulting company in London. So he, he traveled like two hours up the country just to, to be there. And uh, it, for some reason, in that moment, I broke down. Like, I, I just didn't know what was going on. And no one was telling me anything. And I just felt really upset, I was really nervous. Um, and I just, I almost blacked out. Like, I was just started crying. And, th and this guy, he was like, he was, he was excited by that. He was, he was on it immediately. And he was like, well, what are you crying for? You know, what, you know, you know tell, tell me what you're feeling in this moment. The kind of, like, almost like a, almost like you do in, in this situation. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and and that, that that really that that angered me even in that even in that moment when I'm like in in a really bizarre spot just just that he would he would like because because the, the people that I actually know were not present so the people from my company had, were supposed to be there but were out of the room at this moment it was just him and me and it seemed like he just took advantage of the situation to maybe do something that it was, wasn't really supposed to do which is like poke at me a bit and that that sort of frustrated me. Do you feel like I anyway, can get you now? No, no, no. It has nothing to do with that. Um, he's, he's not a licensed psychiatrist or anything. He was just some... I don't even really know. But um, anyway, it, it turned out that they were, they were putting me on suspended... Um, they wanted to suspend me um, pending investigation um, because they had heard complaints from this girl um, that... that Um, I what was the allegation? That I was harassing her was was, was what they what they how they termed it. And they and they lumped and because that didn't seem sufficient, they lumped in some other stuff as well. So they also they also tried to pin on me that I was suicidal, which is absolute nonsense. But it, that that thing blew out of proportion in, in, in what followed. Where did they get that idea? So they got that. So a couple of weeks prior, one of the new HR, well, there's only one, and she was very young, she was not much older than me, some fresh HR girl. Um, I, I did this, this thing, you know, as a joke. To, I can't remember what the conversation around it was, but I, I, I did this motion, like pretended to shoot myself in the head at one point. And she'd mentioned this to them prior to this guy meeting me. And, and at the time, she had no concern whatsoever. But but weeks later, she mentions it to them, and they take it super serious. Like they think, oh, this guy's like off his. This guy's like a, you know, a bit of a nutcase. So, how does it feel to be on the other end of that scrutiny, to be treated like that? You 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 have nowhere to run. Like, so let's say that I actually was like, if you're if you're in a, if you're in a mental asylum, it's no good. It's no good pleading your case, right? It's no good. Oh, you know, of course you're. Oh, you're the one that's not crazy, right? You know, it's like, oh, no, I'm honestly, I'm not mental. You know, if everyone if everyone's perception of you is that you're crazy, and you need to be locked up. You have no plea. There's nothing you can say to get out of that. And it's it's very much the same situation that I was in. It's like, well, if they if they all believe that you're a, you're a suicide case, then. Um, it doesn't. There's nothing you can say, but but they weren't sure. They weren't sure. That's they just had this one girl's word. So what they ended up doing was sending me to. So they suspended me, but with pay pending this investigation. And part of that investigation was to send me to a psychiatrist for a, a number of sessions. I don't remember how many. Off somewhere in the country, like some miles away, in the middle of nowhere. Um, just this guy who lived in his, his little cottage doing psychiatry, I guess. Um, to, and, his, and, his, and his main purpose was to figure out whether or not I was actually suicidal. I think that's, although I, I kind of used those sessions to, to try and gain some understanding and like some perspective and good for you. Uh, but I, I didn't get anywhere. I don't think I got anywhere with it because I'm still here today wondering about it. Like, did I fuck up? Did she fuck up? Is it my fault? Is it her fault? Is it nobody's fault? Is it the company's fault? Who's to blame for all this shit? I still don't know. It's like this many years later, I still don't know. So 
in, in the, it, it took two months before they finally finally let me go and finally gave me some fucking closure, at least told me that they, uh, there's no longer a job for me here. Oh, up until that point, I would come in occasionally to meet with these guys. Again, they would come up from London and they would ask me questions and they would try to, to, to learn stuff about what had happened. And, and I couldn't make sense of it. Like, what is this? What is this? Like, why what make such it, a fuss? What was it like to, do you remember what it felt like walking into the building to like meet with those guys every now and then as they kind of need no, you and poked and prodded? I, I, um, Keep in mind that it's my first job out of university. I'm pinning everything. I still feel like if I lose my job here, I'm never going to get. I'm never going to work again. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I, <laughs> I don't know what my future looks like if I can't if I can't get my job back. So I go into these sessions. I prepare for them. I try and prepare all the evidence I can to answer whatever questions they might have. Uh, I, I would draw up timelines, and, 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 and I mean, I don't have access to any of the information I would have had, but I just have access to my own memory. But I would try to prepare stuff. To, to, to try and placate whatever concerns they had. Ultimately, it, it didn't matter at all. And I, and I only kind of gauged in the very last session what actually might have been going on. So I think they, 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 <laughs> they were just concerned whether or not there was any legal ramifications for to firing one or both of us. I think that's what was actually going on. It wasn't really the case that they gave a shit about whether they, they kept me on or her on or what, whatever it was. It was just whether or not, and they eventually concluded that legislation at that time was that if you haven't worked anywhere for a full two years, no, full one year at that time, it's now two years, but at that time it was only 12 months, um, then you could you could like take a court a company to a tribunal over unfair dismissal and all this. And I hadn't, I hadn't quite made it to 12, but she had. She was just in by like a, a month or two. And I think, so obviously they never told it to me in those terms. They let, they let a few points around that slip during the final meeting, which kind of clued me in to what was going on. But, um, I, and I believe that's what it was. But, I, you know, maybe that's just the story I tell myself. Maybe I really did fuck up horrendously. And, and, but it just, it's, it's so bizarre. Like, I've not had an experience like it since. And I can't even imagine, like, why go through that, that much fuss? I'm a junior. So is she. She's just a translator. You just the, the ten a penny, the cog in a machine. Just go and get another one. Like, why go to that much fuss? Why keep me on payroll for two months? Why bring up these people from London? I still don't know. Now it's insane to me that this happened. It's just, did they really feel like they had a moral responsibility to me and to themselves and to the company to make sure that I wasn't actually suicidal before letting me go? Because that's kind of how they painted it. But I don't. I don't know if I can really. If I can really buy it. It's just it's just insane the whole thing, and we're not, we're not even going into details. That's just the sort of like the high level, but it, it, it's me, fucking you, crazy. Can you, can you give me an example of what details you're you're not going into? Pro uh, probably not actually. Most of it's a haze now. Okay. It's probably nothing important. So it sounds like, okay. I mean, but but I really so wish I really wish I knew like whose fault everything all of this was. What would change for you if you knew whose fault it was? If it's not my fault, then I don't have to. <laughs> you don't I guess I don't have to feel bad about it. Do you feel bad about it? I don't know. It sounds like this is something you've been carrying for a long time. Yeah. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to feel bad about it because I don't even know. We broke it. I got, so I broke it off with this girl. And the next thing I know, I'm being hauled into a room to, to, to try and defend my actions, which, which was what sounds exactly? Sounds humiliating. Well, yeah. Is that how it feels? It's not just human. It's just bizarre, and and like, the, the the frustrating thing is. So they were speaking to me, but they were also speaking to her. But I mean, I never saw her again, right? They wouldn't. They obviously wouldn't let us go near each other. So I don't really know if I'm supposed to feel bad. Like, what if what if what if I was just being played from the, from day one to day thirty to day sixty? Like, what what if? 
what if she was totally happy with it, how everything turned out? It seems unlikely, but then I wouldn't have to feel bad because I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm the victim in that case. But but what if what if she actually genuinely? So 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 the other thing is so the the way the reason they were actually more on her side than mine from the get go is because of the way the in, the way the 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 problem was reported was that she didn't go to the company and say, look, I don't like this guy. He's been making me feel bad or he's harassing me or whatever the, the claim was. It's because she was just crying at her desk and then someone inquired, oh, why, why, are, you, why are you sad? And they said, oh, and then she told them about it. And, and they, 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 they drilled that point home to me a few times, which is why they're kind of like on her side. Um, it kind of... Does it... Failing to neglect to mention that actually it was a common occurrence for she she was very emotional and frequently got upset about things that I have no idea what they would be at her desk. Mm. And it just turned out that one of those times it was my fault apparently. Sounds pretty unfair to me. What's unfair? Who? who what's what's unfair to who? It sounds like you got railroaded. <laughs> I don't know. Did I? Did I? Did I genuinely do something bad? I don't know. Sure, I, th I think you did something bad. It sounds like you sent a hurtful email. The rest of it, I, you know, seems like you didn't really do anything wrong. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, looking back at it, probably that it, it is would be it would be just that at most. But at the time, I was also wondering, like, probably other things. I don't know. Like, have I been a bad friend? Have I been a bad person fundamentally? Like, well, uh, I don't, I don't know. Like, probably now, I don't. Probably now, it doesn't sit with me like that. So, with, with that, how, with that how, level of comp. How does it sit with you now? I guess I guess it's just water under the bridge. I don't know, but but also not. Because... I don't think so, man. <laughs> like, I, I just want, I just want. I guess it's like I told you. But I just want closure. It's like someone tell me, please, someone tell me who the fuck is at fault. Yeah. So I, at least oh, I know whether do I do. You think? Do you think this influences your relationships with women now? I don't know. <laughs> does it? Does it not? I don't know. I think it does. I think I think you've been carrying this so. around for a long, long time. Yeah, the, the, that that and the rest. The, 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 there was like a, at least one other relationship which we we, we never we, we don't have time to talk about. But but yeah, that, that was the first one. Can I tell you what I see and what I heard? Please. So you talk about closure. You talk about just wanting to know, right? You just want to know. I mean, it's, it sounds like you're actually, if you made a mistake and if you fucked up and if you're bad, you can live with that. It sounds like- No, no. Doing. Well, I, no, I don't know how I would take it if I, if I learned that. Well, if I, if I learned, that, if I learned that, that, that it's my fault, I don't know what I would do then. I, I guess I want to hear that it's not. Yeah, so you're looking for absolution and it sounds like the uncertainty is, is just really tearing you up. It sounds like torture. It, yeah, it's, not so much. I, I mean, I, that, that's the thing. Like, I rarely think about it now, thank God. But if I have to think about it, then yeah, it is like that. Yeah. So that doesn't sound like something that you've let go. So generally speaking, when we have experiences like this, we carry them with us. And they occupy a space on, in our mind and they tend to influence or burden what we do. And what I hear from you is, is that you had a relationship where someone was very clearly interested in you and that you felt used, you felt icky by y'all's relationship. You expressed your feelings. You also cared about her and were attracted to her. And you were hoping that she would make it easy on you. You were hoping that sharing your feelings with her, she would say she would be kind of like she would give you closure, right? She wouldn't leave things ambiguous that she would say, oh, yeah, yeah. no, we, we have to stop. But she did the yeah, opposite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so here comes Paul, who's lonely and has never been 
appreciated by a woman in his life. And here comes a woman who's in a relationship. And despite being in a relationship and despite having all of these, these reasons for her to say no, Paul, she's not saying no. That makes it even doubly difficult. Mm -hmm. And now, and then you don't know, I mean, you keep on using the word awkward, but you don't know what to think. You don't know what to feel. It feels wrong to you, but you want it. You want her, you want it to continue. You want her to break up. No, I didn't want it to continue. Yeah, I wanted to to break up, yeah. Yeah, I think that there's a part of you that wanted it to continue. I don't believe that's the case. Okay. Not at that time. I don't know that it's worth to go down that tangent, but I'll just say this. When you have a connection with someone who you go out to lunch with every day and you guys are emailing back and forth every day and you find yourself attracted to them, I find it hard to believe that there is not some corner of your mind or your heart that does not want that to continue or want more from that. I just find that hard to believe. No, but it reached a point where where I generally... I told you, I generally so, felt discomfortable with it and I, I wanted to cut it off and I did yep. and I was just fine with it after that. Yeah, so Paul, I think that I agree with all of those things as well, but I want you to understand that your mind is not black and white. I think on balance, you decided that the relationship was not good for you and it made you too uncomfortable, but just because it made you too uncomfortable doesn't mean that there isn't a part of you that enjoyed spending time with her, right? Yeah, so, that, yeah. up until that point, yes. Uh, you're, 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 pos- you're, you're providing. Okay, so you're presupposing that I genuinely wanted it to. Con- a part of me genuinely, whether subconscious or otherwise, part of me genuinely wanted it to continue in spite of that, and I don't think that's the case. Okay. Without regret, I ended it. Okay. So you decided that you didn't want to be a part of this relationship because of kind of the right. unclear boundaries right. that you were content with friendship. And that yes. their feelings, but that, you yes. know, I heard. Yes. The second one that I haven't told you about went more the way that you're implying, which is like, so, so it, there was a second girl and it was exactly the same fucking setup. She has a boyfriend, but she's talking to me every day, all day, every day. And this was not at work. This is slightly different. And, and yes, I knew she had a boyfriend from the start, but I kind of, I wanted to play that fucking game. This, this time around, I wanted to play that fucking game and I wanted, I wanted to beat him. And long story short, I didn't. But <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've got time to go into all of that. I don't even even know if it's beneficial to do so. so but I'm telling you, the first time I did not. Fine. I, fine. I, I, yeah. I, thank you for clarifying. You're more than welcome. And and but I, I think also there's there's a sense of powerlessness about this. There's a sense of confusion and bewilderment. There's a sense of getting handled process there's anger there's frustration there's confusion and i think the the biggest part i mean the thing that seems to be weighing on you the most is you don't know who to blame yeah is it you to tell me or what (laughs) would it help yeah i don't think this was your fault paul i don't think you did anything wrong I think nothing. That, not really. I think everything that you let me put it this way. I think everything you did is forgivable. I think that you had feelings. You there, there was. I think you had a relationship with a woman where you guys had decided that you were going to be friends, and that as that relationship, huh? Breaking up again. Oh, sorry. I said. I. I, I think you. You did. Everything you did, I think, was reasonable and also forgivable. So I think, let me just, let me tell you the story as I heard it, okay? And I'm pretty good at sniffing out when there are cognitive biases and bullshit and stories. So, you know, take that, let me take that for what well, it I mean, is. You, ha- you, ha- you have a bias because you only hear my side, but yes, go No, on. but I mean, I hear bias, I hear only one side of stories all the time from people and I still can sniff out bullshit pretty well. That's my point, okay. right? So when an alcoholic okay. comes into my office and says I haven't been drinking, I'm pretty good at sniffing that out. Um. So here's what I hear. You went to work. You had a friend. You guys had a connection. It was purely platonic, and you guys really enjoyed spending time with each other. You guys spent time with each other. She had made it very clear to you that she was only interested in friendship. 
And then something happened between the two of you, which is that you started to get attracted to her. And chances are she got attracted to you too. Otherwise, you know, things would not have proceeded. Yeah, I, don't know. I can't comment on her end. Yeah. Well, but yeah, but I think we can. Right? So I, I think that, that those kinds of feelings and stuff evolve all the time when people spend a lot of time together. You guys really, it sounds like you guys had a connection. And then you noticed that you were starting to feel attracted to her and out of, out of actually your duty towards your friendship, you shared that with her because you felt like your relationship was, was changing and almost out of respect. I mean, I think it's a reasonable thing for friends to do if they start to have feelings of attraction because it gives you a chance to sort of figure out how you guys are going to move forward as friends and, and whether there's something worth exploring or not exploring. And you were expecting her to pull back and she didn't. And then it also sounds like she kind of was was sending you mixed signals because on the one hand, she's you guys are going to lunch every day. On the other hand, you're emailing back and forth and then she yeah. tells you she wants to start baking cakes. And then I think you started to feel guilty. You started to feel like this isn't right and I'm not sh- so sure what you wanted or you didn't want, but it just didn't feel good to you anymore. So you tried to push her away and lo and behold, she's actually pretty into you and values your relationship. Um, and unclear of what, how she feels about you, but there are also a lot of questionable things about her background too. So a lot of times people who meet online and move countries are not actually that emotionally invested in the person that they move in with, or when they move, it turns out to be like a different kind of relationship than being like a thousand miles away. So I know a lot of online relationships that fall apart because they meet someone else who's local. I've heard that story a thousand times. Coming back to you and what you're at fault for. And then I think you start to feel uncomfortable and you don't really know how to handle it and you want the relationship to end and you've tried to tell her things that would drive her away and she doesn't get driven away, she doesn't get driven away, and she doesn't get driven away. And so then you send her a mean email because that's sometimes what you have to do to push people away. Now, do I think you could have done a better job with communicating things or setting limits with her? Absolutely. Do I think that you should have sent an email? Absolutely not. Do I think it's forgivable given the circumstances? Absolutely. Right? So life is not about not making mistakes. It's about, you know, like making mistakes that are reasonable given the circumstances because we're not all perfect human beings. And then the real shit show starts. You get railroaded. You get called into a room. It's not even your boss. It's some guy who's driven two hours up. I don't even know how you feel. I I mean, it sounds like you feel powerless. You feel confused. You feel persecuted. You feel like it's unfair. I mean, that's what I heard. I heard venom in your voice. I heard anger. I heard heard a sense of injustice about the way that you were treated. Yeah, it didn't matter what... See, at the time, I believed that (laughs) all this work and preparation I might do to vindicate myself would, would actually... Have a pr- like so, I, I like I almost I, felt like I, I felt like it was a fair trial, but it wasn't. Yeah, I also I also hear futility. I also hear hopelessness. Right, that you had hope yeah. and that hope was was smashed. And I think you carry this with you. I think you carry it with you today. Have you learned how to suppress it? Absolutely. But there's just I mean. You know, I could see the emotion in your face. I'm sure everyone who's watching could see the emotion in your face. I think we can see the dejection and despair in your face now. And you just want to be free of it. You want to know whose fault it was. I don't think it was your fault. I think actually your conception of it was pretty good. I think sometimes women who are hurt say things. I think not just women, people who are hurt say things. And I think that you know, she, someone caught her at a time where she said some stuff and then this HR person noticed like this whole thing. And so like, p- like pieces of the puzzle start, got put together. And it's not even that those pieces of the puzzle, it's not even the likelihood that those pieces connect in a certain way. The corporation doesn't care about what happened. They cared about how things could look because that's how corporations think, right? They don't actually care about the truth. They think about you know, can we get sued for this? Could someone make an argument for getting sued? And the answer is absolutely yes in their case. And I think they played their game, which is that they protect themselves and they don't want to get sued. And they'll railroad an employer or two in the process if they need to. 
I think if anyone mm-hmm. is to blame, it's actually your boss and your, your company for the way that they handled it. I, I would like to think so. I've, I've never seen anything like it since. It seems absolutely bizarre. Yeah. And, and I, I think the challenge here, Paul, is that I think a piece of this lingers with you. And I think a piece of it swims around in the back of your mind and changes the way that you view relationships. Like not in such a grand, like, I don't think it's as simple as like, that's the reason you don't have a girlfriend now. I think these kinds of experiences happen all the time, but. Is it related though? I think so. I, I think it's incredibly hurtful. Was this, was this, was this whole exposition setting the grounds for becoming an incel 15 years later? Uh... Setting the grounds. I don't think it's quite as that tied together and cause and effect, but I think it could account for 20% of it. Right. When I think about when when I think about like the person who would have walked out of that door, I can think about that person would have difficulty engaging with other women. And that's not because you're an incel. That's because the human brain is designed to be pain averse. So if we look at the circuits of our brain that are the strongest at learning, they're very close to pain. So if you touch a hot stove once, it's very, very hard to touch it again. So the biggest teacher that we have is pain. And this sounds like an incredibly painful experience to you. And you've been fucking avoiding it ever since. And I can't imagine what kind of other things you've avoided in terms of opportunities, relationships, stuff like that, because of your fear of getting hurt. Well, it's not like I'm just slapping women away left and right. I can tell you that. Yeah. And I, th- I think that's, that's exactly what you want. I think that you you try to create situations where you don't want to, you don't want to risk having to slap a woman away and you don't want to risk having a woman like in, engage in a relationship with you that could fall apart or end like this again. It, so it's instead, definitely true it was definitely true closer to the time I don't even know where where I sit with it now. Yeah, I, I so, feel like I'm trying I'm trying to get back in there despite everything that's happened and yet somehow it doesn't so, so I think, I think last time our yeah. pearl was that hopelessness is a protective mechanism. And I think hopelessness is the defense against something like this. Because if there's no possibility of a relationship, there's no rodeo that you just went through. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you're making it sound like, again, like I'm just <laughs> turning away opportunities. I mean, that actually don't come anymore. Yeah, I, I don't I don't mean to say that you're turning away opportunities. What I mean to say is that I find it hard to believe that this could not have influenced the next five years, which in turn Oh, it definitely did. Yeah, it definitely did. Which like in turn next. is going to have its own impact on the five years after that, which in turn is gonna have its own impact on the five years after that. But how is it in fact effect, affecting me today? I don't know. Well, so what I see is a lot of suppressed emotion. And Uh my, my experience as a clinician is that when there's suppressed emotion, that emotion leaks. And it affects people in unexpected ways. And that most of the time they're not aware of it. But if it's leaking, you should be able to see it, right? Yeah, so I think your hopelessness is a sign of the leaking. Because that hopelessness as a protective mechanism comes from somewhere. Right. And I think it's reinforced by all kinds of other logical things, like the fact that you've tried to date people over and over and over again and it hasn't worked. Yeah. But I I do think, so let me put it this way, Paul. How does it affect you today? I think you still carry the burden. And I think it's hard to feel free when you carry that burden. And I Mm -hmm. think it's hard to fully engage in a relationship when you carry a burden. And that the purest and happiest relationships happen with people who feel unburdened or share those burdens. It weighs on you. So, so how do I take it off? I mean, I guess it helps to know that you don't think it. I mean, I, I mean, think finally you start, someone tells me that, that you, I don't have to you've feel started, guilty about You've it. started to take it off by expressing some of these emotions. So you've opened up that bottle and you're venting some of that emotion. And so the weight of it becomes less. I think it's not the first time I've told this story, though, but it never really makes me feel better because the person I tell it to never 
gives me closure either. <laughs> You're the first person to, to say that I don't have to feel guilty about it. Yeah, I don't I don't think you need to. And I think I, don't I, I think it's make a difference. Or not. I, I think I well, let me let me clarify. OK, Paul, I think that. It's fine to feel guilty. I think you have. You have put in the time that you need to with that guilt, and I think it's time to let that guilt go. Can I, can I just do that? Yeah, just let, I mean, it's hard, but just let it go. I mean, I, I think I think you you tell yourself at this point of your life that like, you know, chances are you didn't fuck up as I mean, I don't think you fucked up that bad. I think really the only thing that you d did was push her in, in a way that was immature, which I think is forgivable. Mm. And I, I think that if you felt guilty, so be it, because maybe you did something wrong. But then you also have to forgive yourself. Like the way that you let guilt go is by forgiving yourself. And and you kind of think a little bit about the person that you were and you think about how experience, inexperienced you were. And you think about, you know, this was your first job out of college and you had been to an all boys school and you hadn't had a whole lot of experience with women. And so you're bound to make mistakes. And then you kind of... Mm. You know, it does feel a little bit hollow to have someone else. You know, yeah, you know what I just realized, and, and, and I don't know, maybe you're going to like do a Freudian clap or something, but like fucking, I'm probably never going to be like satisfied unless she figures me right. And, and that, that can never happen. Yep. I think what you've been looking for is forgiveness from her. What you're really looking for is closure from her. Because I think it's incredibly painful to have a relationship like that and then like not like get taken down to the second floor with some guy from London, drives up two hours to see you and you never get a chance to see her. Yeah, I mean, I can't even, I can't even say I'm, oh, I'm sorry. It, it, like, it just, you just... It's... And of course, they're not going to give you that opportunity because they think you're fucking crazy. <laughs> but but putting that aside, she probably didn't want to anyway. It's just that it just sucks. You, you can't just have you can't just. You can't just reconcile your differences and and, and say goodbye. It, you know, it sounds stupid, but like, why does it even matter? Especially now, like after all this time. But don't invalidate your feelings. It does suck. Right. So th there is there is sorrow and sadness and unfairness in the world. And we can't there are some things that we can't fix. And. Um, and, and that's unfortunately the, the way the world is. And just because the world is that way, I think it, it we carry that burden for a time and then it's time to let it go. You need to forgive yourself, Paul. You need to cut yourself some slack. And also let yourself hope again. That something very bad happened to you and it is unfair. and You didn't get closure. And the last thing that you need to have is compassion towards yourself for the circumstances that you've been given. Even if you can't get forgiveness from, from her, I'm not sure that you get compassion from yourself. You were what, in your 20s at that time? So there's, early, early 20s. Yeah, so like what you need is compassion from 35-year-old Paul towards early 20s Paul. You're older, you're wiser. And go back and tell that dude that it's not his fault. He did the best that he could. And now it's time to pick yourself up, the, up off the mat. And give yourself a shot again. There you go. Good.
suddenly it's quite hard to breathe. <laughs> Let it out. It's wanted to come out for a long time. You've been holding it for a long time, so just let it out, man. Good job. It's almost like I'm back in the fucking room again. Absolutely. Interrogation room. This is the Samskar. You know what a Samskar is? Yeah, it is. Yep. I already, when I first heard you explain to Rackful what a Samskar was. And I was on the other side of the screen. I immediately re realized that that was the perfect term to describe exactly this. And now you know what it is for me, too. But I, I, I laughed at the start, though, because you said something like, yeah, 35 year old. But we'll go back and figure. I actually thought about what I would actually say. What would you say? <laughs> well, I don't know. I would probably. It it's in my nature to be a bit of a troll. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. <laughs> like I, I've been I've been trolling since before the the term was even coined like it, it wasn't even called anything before so you're the ot so the og the, the OT. ot okay the, <laughs> the OT, yeah. fuck yeah i'm the ot <laughs> so i oh, part of me would like be like so so so, so the, the thing is like so i wanted to break it off right but i i would probably like troll myself a little bit and say well like no don't do that like go and kick this other guy's ass or something and like but also not so the reason I laughed is because it was a conflict. I didn't actually laugh at that. I laughed at the fact that actually then I realized that actually this girl isn't even that fucking good anyway. <laughs> like she was no, she was probably no good for me. Like it was, it was, it was fine and it was fun when we were young. But like, like, like I, I, I met, I touched on a brief. Like she's a, bit, she's a little bit of a fucking nut job anyway. Like she, like I told you, she was crying at her desk. I don't even know what the fuck about, but just like random stuff from what I heard. I didn't know her that well to even know what it was, but but she she had some problems, whatever the fuck they were. I, it was I, I'm sure she's doing fine now. It, it's, uh, at least I hope so. But like, uh, I don't know if she was really that good for me anyway. I, so I would probably be like, no, just get the fuck out of there. Um, so it's kind of weird to be even hung up about it at all now. But I definitely was. So two things, Paul, and then we're probably going to have to wrap up. I'll give you the last word. The first is last time we talked about laughing in its face. Remember that? Yeah. So I'd say if you can learn how to laugh in its face, so be it. Sometimes humor is all we have left when the world becomes a terrible, terrible place. And medical humor is some of the most morbid humor that you can get because we deal with a lot of terrible things. And so there's a part of me that says that when we're talking about authenticity and all that other shit that we were talking about for the first half hour, 45 minutes, I think, I think Paul, if you want to find a good relationship, 
it needs to be you with a colored shirt who also shows your inner troll just a little bit. And it's going to be the girl who can appreciate that who's going to be the right one for you. And I think instead of trying to be what they want you to be, be that person. And the last thing, I know you can disagree with that or there are all kinds of problems. No, it's not that I disagree. It's just that it's like not really practical. No, well, so, so like... So, so, so what women are in my life right now? Well, there's the colleagues at work who, who are just colleagues at work and there's the speed dates. And you can't really... It's pretty, I mean, it's pretty hard to engineer like a natural trolling situation yeah. in four minutes. Well, 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 yeah, but I mean, so, so that what I'm saying is like, you know, when you if it feels right and it feels natural, then do it. And if it doesn't, you can't force it, right? That's the forcible smile. I'm just saying that when it comes to the authentic you, let, you know, that's a part of it. And then the last thing is you keep on asking, what do I do about it? And it's kind of silly that I've been holding on to it. You do whatever you just did, because whatever you just did is exactly what you need to do. Right? You've been holding on to this for such a long time, and, and when you think about 35-year-old, you going back, and it's kind of like saying, hey, man, just let it go, man. She's not even like, she's not worth holding on to that hurt for. And something about that alchemical process is how you get unburdened and how you move forward. Mm -hmm. I, I almost feel like I'm already over it. I don't know if I actually am because it's a little bit too much in one go to, to probably process like that. But yep, it's but. how it's how it works. So I think I think the reason that so my experience has been that some scars are like dominoes. So one injury get begets another injury begets another injury, and they kind of build up. But then also, once you knock the first one down, something has fundamentally changed. But I still don't know that I'm like uh, over the second one. <laughs> Fine, good. Fine. So there's there's more work to be done. Maybe, maybe. No, but it's good that you're able to laugh and also that you're able to notice that you're not over the second. I would trust your instinct in that moment. That you're over something here, but there's more work to be done, and that's also how it works, man. Any thoughts or questions before we wrap up? So that's the, um, so it's a crying every stream then. Hopefully not, but, um, you know, I, I wouldn't, I don't really it's care about now. crying, okay. but I do care about you facing the things that you need to face and growing past them. And it just so happens that most of the things, most of the growth that people need to do has involves like negative sum scars. Like if you come on and you're an incel, like I think there may be tears somewhere in there, right? Yeah. How do you feel physically? I'm all right. Tired? Just... No, I'm all right. Hmm. Impressive. It's, cool, it's the master of suppressing emotions, you know? There's the OT. No, that's for real. <laughs> I think, okay. I thought it was funny. I mean, it's probably true <laughs> too, but also funny. It... Obviously, my emotions were not suppressed a moment ago, but like, you, you also learn quick recovery, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But also, actually, I was kind of trying to suppress them in that moment. It's just a bit embarrassing, I guess. But maybe if we were just in a room, you and me, and it wasn't like a small fraction of the internet watching as well, then then I would feel I just fucking go for it, hit the wall. I don't know, but like I don't really want to do that I on think, camera. I think you did that anyway. I don't. I don't think. I, I don't think. No, I was really trying to. St I was really trying to stop myself. Yeah, people do that when I. I mean, <laughs> anyway. So what would happen in different circumstances? I think is relevant. So Paul, I think. I think. You did a good job today. I'm I'm glad you chose yeah, you to talk too. about things that were difficult. Um, I think we gave it a fair shot at like talking about things that weren't difficult and maybe learn something. Maybe you didn't. Maybe it was helpful. Maybe it wasn't. But this is where you know my this is the scent that I caught, and I'm I'm glad you went there because I think it's where you needed to go. 
it's, it's where I, I, I thought from the start that we needed to go, but then I, I second guess myself after the first session. Mm -hmm. Do you well, think that's relevant? Well, you do, don't you? Cause you, you said you said like it is at least twenty percent or something. Yeah, but but, but <laughs> I still don't have a pearl to put on my wall from this session. I don't think. Yep. Do I? Nope. <laughs> Sorry, I've got one. I don't. I don't need to like nope, wallpaper got, it. You, the next pearl you have to find on your own. Oh. I did, I did the one last time, now it's your turn. Okay? Take care, Paul. Good luck. All right, Dr. K. Adios. Bye. Bye.